here. Without other people, you die. So the first years in your life, you're 100% dependent on other people, otherwise you're dead. I think you know, because when you meet a baby, what happens? You start to connect, you smile, you get the smile back. So our need for relatedness, togetherness, relationships, is built in from start. And this is why work with inclusion is so important. And if we want to understand why inclusion is important, and also why diversity is hard, we need to go back millions of years and actually understand how our brain works. So if we think about it, for millions of years, we have been living in tribes protected by other people, fed by other people, fighting with other people, <laughs> fighting against other people. And this has impacted our, our brain immensely. Because at that time, it was super important to be able to understand if you were among friends or foes, if you were safe. And if there was anything changing in the patterns or you felt like, hmm, this is something different here, then it was so important, that was like a, a basically a, a threat to your survival. At that time, if uh, they were coming, like, you know, another tribe, they wanted to hunt in your, uh, in your area, uh, they looked a bit hostile, maybe, it's not like, let's assume good intent. No. Then it's like, really, like, fight for survival. This has impacted our brain. So, in every moment, at work, at home, in our communities, we need to, see, to feel seen and to feel heard, and we really need to feel that we, have, we are valued, we have an impact here. Actually, research shows that as quickly as lightning strikes, our brain decides if I'm safe in this room or not, if I'm safe in this group. And if my brain feels, ah, you're not completely safe here, then I take a step back. There's like negative emotions, uncertainty, uncomfortables, uncomfortableness. Maybe I don't really like act as I would like to. Maybe I start to act a bit strange. Maybe I, free I freeze. And in neuroscience, this is a, a well-known concept called amygdala hijack. We get hijacked by the limbic part of our brain. We are all in our emotions. We can't think rationally. Actually, our whole brain shuts down. We are in our emotions. We don't have access to our creativity, analytic powers, strategic thinking, or even rationality. We become unrational. So when we enter a group, our brain starts to sense, am I safe here? And if I'm not safe, then I will not perform. If I feel safe, though, I feel valued here, I feel seen here in this group, then I actually lean in. So there's like positive emotions, joy, curiosity, interest, my perspectives are widened. I'm, I'm, I'm more positive, basically. And I get full access to my brain. Do we want our co-workers to have full access to their brain at work? I would say yes. But that's not what's going on. And what's tricky here is that what, what helped us survive millions, for millions of years is now putting sticks in our own wheels. So we, our brain, search for differences, like, if, like different or like a difference in pattern is something negative. But we know that differences are positive for business. But our brain, uh, not so much. So what we can do is to create awareness and to understand the unconscious bias that we're all carrying 
and to work very proactively and intentionally with inclusion. And I'm going to tell you about how we did that at Mentimeter. Ultimately, this is about performance. We all want performing companies, high standards, and we want everyone to bring all what they got to the table. So I'm not here to talk about diversity for, I do care about the planet, but I'm here to talk about diversity for our businesses. You know uh, already, my name is Anna, I'm 42 years old. Uh, I'm Chief People and Culture Officer at Mentimeter. I'm also a white woman in a very white Scandinavia. I identify as a woman in a, in a society uh, where, yeah, or a, a country where half of the uh, population does. I'm heterosexual in a country where most people are. So I should feel safe, yeah? I'm the norm. But I do not feel safe. Theoretically, I do. But I also see, my, see myself, like, see what's going on. Like, I, I've been to a meeting, for example. And then afterwards, I wonder, like, why did I, why, why, why did I lose my confident, confidence in that meeting? Or why didn't I say, stop, I don't believe in this? Or why didn't I add my knowledge when I had an opinion and knowledge that would benefit the group. There is something going on here. And if I imagine that, a white woman heterosexual in Scandinavia, then imagine what other people might feel and experience. Imagine how much performance and progress that's blocked in our companies because we don't work with inclusion. And also, imagine how much performance and progress that's blocked because you, you, do not look all people in the eye when you enter a room. Or because you do not make everyone in the room feel valued, seen, heard. This is us, our behavior. That is what inclusion is about. And the question is that we need to ask ourselves, who am I listening to or who am I listening to at work? Who do I take input from? Maybe it is the persons that look like me. Maybe it is the persons that I feel safe with. Those are the ones I ask. And that goes for everyone, in all groups, all people. And for me, I have the best job because I work at Mentimeter as Chief People and Culture Officer. And Mentimeter as a platform helps companies and organizations and higher education to build more inclusive and safe and engaging company cultures throughout the world. And we do that in three ways. So, Better meetings, meetings where we actually harness the collective intelligence of the group. That's the power of inclusion. We do that but by better trainings, trainings, education, where people are included, it's interactive, it's engaging. We're actually co-creating learning together. That's the power of inclusion. And also, we help leaders to become more modern leaders, leaders that are not only directing and giving answers, leaders that actually ask questions, leaders that are curious on what other people think. Maybe the group is smarter than I am myself. And we have been working with the culture, uh, with diversity intentionally from start. I'm super proud of where we are at today, but we wouldn't be here if it wouldn't, for, uh, wouldn't be for that our founders set this as a core value from the beginning. Niklas and Johnny, our founders, from the beginning said, include everyone, that's one of our core values. 
We all need to believe in this and believe that it has a business impact. I'm also very proud of uh, what type of culture we have created at Mentimeter. So I'm happy that Google put uh, psychological safety on the agenda with their Aristotle project that showed that the high performing teams were also the team that was, had the highest psychological safety. And we are, of course, measuring psychological safety at Mentimeter. This is from our latest survey. Exact same numbers for women and men. I'm going to invite you to a 16-minute party here. So let's think about this as when you're planning a party. So diversity, to put it very simple, is who, who is at the party, basically. Do we have a diverse set of people at our party? Inclusion, that's about, okay, I'm at this party, I'm standing in the corner, like when you were 12 years old and very shy, but like, mm, I'm not really with the cool kids. I'm not really included here. So inclusion is about who's on the dance floor. Belonging, I would put like, okay, I'm on the dance floor, I'm dancing, but do I dare to, you know, do the quirky dance? Or am I just like standing there? Can I just dance and like get lost in the music without feeling like embarrassed, embarrassed or judged? That's belonging for me. Is it only the cool kids who are dancing or are everyone cool kids? And then equity, the hardest part and the most important part. Who is on the planning committee of this party? Who is actually setting the processes, the standards? And who is getting a share of the revenue? The party was a success. Who is sharing the money? But then, of course, we need to ask ourselves the question, uh, should everyone dance? What's the point? What's the point of having everyone at the dance floor? So for me, it's very obvious, and this is also very supported by research, so it's like a no-brainer. But we know that the most high-performing teams are, the, are, are safe teams. If you want high performance, you need to create safety, inclusion. We also know that diverse teams show a higher degree of innovation and creativity. Also, if you are a global company, diversity will help you to understand your customers. There's been a lot of talk here today about customer obsession. This will help you to understand your customers all around the globe. And of course, you get a bigger pool to recruit from. Great stuff. The world becomes a better place if you do the job. And it's also much more fun. So all in all, it's very clear that a diverse company is a more performing company. And actually, the other week, does this work? Yes. Uh, the, the other week in Financial Times, there was this uh, big study that was revealed that actually like, showed the numbers. So gender-balanced companies outperforms, uh, outperforms peers. We all want to be there. OK, what's, what's hard then? It's, is it the hardest part to get people to the party or to make them stay, stay and dance? What's hardest? I would say that building a diverse team is the easy part in one way. Because you just need to put the effort in. It takes time, but it's in a way easy. There are best practices, you just do them. You need to build the pipe, a diverse pipe, because when you come to the recruitment moment, when you're supposed to, to, to choose this candidate or this candidate, then of course, you need to go for competence. Who is, who is the best fit for this role? You don't want to end up in gender discussion at that point. That needs to be taken care of when you're building the pipe. At Mentimeter, we use tests, uh, logic ability test, person, uh, personality test, before uh, you come and meet uh, the, the hiring team. And the reason here is to avoid as many unconscious bias as possible to find the right candidate. Because, for example, 
a recruiter looks at a CV maybe 20 seconds. And I promise you that the ones that have design skills and made a beautiful CV, they will get higher ranked than the ones that did not design their CV. Design skills only matters for design positions. In all other positions, design skills does not say anything about people's performance, promise. So if we can use ability test, personality test to really understand who is the best fit, and then we can just take away all the other type of biases in the process. Then putting together a, a, a diverse hiring team, super important, because we are, uh, depending on who we are, our experience, our culture, whatever, we actually will read candidates differently. So at Mentimeter, we have five people in all the recruiting uh, processes. And then train your hiring managers in interview techniques, in like understanding unconscious biases. So they're not only recruiting people that they feel safe with that looks like themselves. Also, anonymous scoring, super important. Once all the five people met with the candidate, you score anonymously. No one talks with anyone before to see who is the best fit. And then there's a lot of best, good best practices around uh, how you can gender code uh, or gender decode your job ads to make sure that they are uh, attra <laughs> attracting uh, both uh, genders in, in, in the same way. I have uh, a few uh, tips and tricks for each stage in your company. So Mentimeter today, we're 350 people uh, in Toronto, in Stockholm, and in Sydney. Uh, but when I started as VP people three years ago, we were only 60. First step, if you're a founder, maybe you're a founder, you have a team of five, six people, you, need, you really need to do some soul searching here. Do you believe in, in inclusion and diversity for real? This is not something that HR works with. You need to believe in this. Otherwise, you can I think if you don't, don't believe in it, don't pretend. Skip it. So that's first step. Then invest time in building relationships and making everyone at the company feel safe. So, and specifically when people are onboarding. Remember your first job. Remember the when you, you were 23 and you were the first week at a new company, how nervous you were. It's, it's not, I mean, let's put the time and effort into making people feel safe their first weeks at work. Search for colleagues outside of your network. Learn how to interview for competence and also personal values. When you are getting a bit bigger, I think like if you succeeded with the stage, with the first stage, then you can start also to make a stand as a workplace. Uh, and it's super important here that you integrate the values that you have in all your people processes. And I'm not here to set your core values, but if you believe that inclusion is important, I do believe that some of your values should be about collaboration or inclusion or uh, the group is smarter than the individual. Something that has to do with this. Because otherwise, it would be very hard for you to push for this in the business. So integrate with people processes. With that, I mean that when, when people, like your employer brand, uh, how, uh, your employer marketing, how is the recruitment or the candidate experience, how is the interview process? Do you interview for the values that you, that you care about? And also, later on, performance management, like performance reviews, do you make sure to include inclusion, collaboration, communication skills in how you evaluate people? You can also start to use your, your employees, uh, so they are active in, in the relevant communities to, find a, uh, to get a diverse pipe. And you really need to work with your onboarding, and you also here need to start to build your people and culture team and make sure that that is a diverse team. I just realized I missed one thing for the forming stage, that in the beginning, when you're hiring your first HR person, and if that person, the first thing they are saying in the interview is starting to talk about diversity and inclusion, I actually think it's the wrong person. 
Because you want someone in HR or people in culture that cares about business results and performance and asks questions about what kind of culture are we supposed to build together to create the best business impact. That is the kind of, kind of HR person you want. But you also want them, of course, to understand and have a lot of knowledge about diversity, inclusion, group development, psychology, how the brain works. But that should not be their first question. Their first question should be about the business. Okay, last one, scaling. So when you're at this stage, then you just need to start to systemize and scale whatever you built up. Uh, the onboarding and all those things. How you work with, with team development, how you work with your leaders. At this stage, you will also uh, have more employees that can help you with the, the work. And they will, if you support it, start, to, uh, start like employee resource groups with more knowledge than you have about minorities uh, and such. Then at this stage, you also need to measure and follow up much more. And for the equity part, you really need to put the gender glasses on and uh, the minority group glasses on when you look at salaries, when you look at your uh, option programs to make sure that they are equal and that there has not been unconscious, unconscious biases in, that processes, in those processes. And we all in the startup world knows that what is measured gets done. This also goes for this area. Put goals in, follow up, follow through, have it on the agenda. Otherwise, it will not happen. So diversity is about getting people to the party, and now inclusion is about making people feel safe. And as I already said, for me, inclusion is for everyone. We're all different, and our brain do not like that we are different because it's perceived as a threat. So inclusion is really about what we do as leaders and as colleagues in each and every meeting. How do we treat each other? And a good model that I would recommend you to look, uh, look into is the SCARF model. So it's SCARF, State Uncertainty, Autonomy, Relatedness, Fairness, from the Neural Leadership Institute in New York. They have paired leadership uh, research with neuroscience to understand like, how our brain works and how then we need to build and design culture and leadership. This is what people need. It's very simple. I want to feel important, status. I want to have certainty, understand what's going on, what will happen. I want autonomy. I want to be able to make a choice and impact what will happen. I have this strong need for relatedness because we are humans, we are social animals. We've been living in tribes for millions of years. We need each other. And we need to build a culture that is actually helping us with that. And also fairness is actually hardwired. The need for fairness is hardwired in our brains. Because during all these years in tribes, it was very important that things were fair fair distribution of resources, weapons, where, where people were living. And people who were good at navigating this actually survived better, had more kids. So people who are good at fairness sensing, we also had an evolutionary impact. Hello. At Mentimeter, we put a lot of effort into togetherness and relatedness because we believe that that is the fundament for everything. If we don't have that and the safety, then we will not get the full capacity of each person. So we invest in our people. We actually go abroad, the whole company, one month every year to another city and live together for four weeks. We've been to Madrid, Vienna, Barcelona. We're going to Manchester in February. So that's an investment we do. But I also want to say that working with inclusion is not, it should not, it's, you can do it with small resources, because it's mostly about how you interact. It's not about throwing money on things. We also have a lot of fun. Fun is important for inclusion. So here on our last Menti days, we, uh, we had this you know, 
competition with our founders. We asked questions and then the audience could vote. So most likely to accidentally start a PR incident. Is it Johnny or Niklas? So it's like, I mean, have some fun during this intense building of your company. Having fun is also, and happiness also correlates with high performance. Pay attention to your meetings, your all hands, your retrospectives, every, every time someone meets. So of course, at Mentimeter, we use our own product a lot. So what we do is do we make sure that the meetings we are having, that people are activated, they are present, we co-create together, we involve, we engage, we get input on decisions, important decisions for the company. We also let people be anonymous in our all hands, so asking questions anonymous, upvoting questions, because you can never be 100% safe in a 350 pe people all hands. And then people ask spicy questions. And they ask questions that, they really, that really are important for them. And then we stand as leaders on the stage answering those questions. No preparation. And to be able to do that, we need to be very like um, grounded in our first principles. Give space for complex questions. Let people in to the conversation and have fun. And we also work in a very structured way to create high-performing teams. We know that teams go through different stages. We support them through the different stages. A team in a conflict stage is 15% productive. A team in stage four is 80% productive. Of course, we want to help our leaders and teams to get there. It's by having conflicts you reach trust. It's not by avoiding conflict. Start small, start early. Short summary, the longer you wait with diversity inclusion, the harder it gets. Diversity in hiring is quite simple, but you need to put in the effort. And you need to focus on the small teams and build safety there. In every moment, you can think about this. How do I make the person sitting next to me feel safe, seen, valued? Nah. That was it. Let's dance. <laughs>